This is your Economic Review. Joining us this morning to help us go through the biggest headlines that you're waking up to this Friday is the CEO, Mibwadi Capital, Abraham Amadogo, who is joining us in the studio this morning. We're also joined by Rodney Omakilo, who is an investment analyst. Good. Let's therefore begin this morning. Now, latest markets authority data on the Nairobi Securities Exchange indicates that foreign investment at the NSC went to 56.37% last month, which is the lowest level since November 2019 when it recorded 55.97%. This has translated to 2 billion of wealth drain from the NSC, with the data showing that foreign investors withdrew 976 million between January and March and 1.01 billion shillings between April 1st and April 20th, with a further breakdown showing that they withdrew 15.25 million daily from the NSA in the first quarter of the year, with this jumping five times to 72.16. Million. Now, the exit by foreigners has not dampened the trading on the NSE though, because the gains in that period, with the market adding 196.71 billion since the year started, and a general overview of all the three indices showing that the NSE 20, NSE 25, and the NSE old share indices are pointing north. Good. Let's look at that market capitalization on exactly where we are as we talk right now. You can actually see that, yes that up and down um falling up but now you can actually see that as from april there around april 21st we've again experiencing that jump now all right let's look at nsa all share index movement and we can actually see that that yes indeed it corresponds with that market capitalization which is just about the same graph therefore confirming that yes indeed <coughs> we are pointing northwards Abraham, how do we synthesize that data that despite foreign investments withdrawal or foreign investors taking, taking a net selling position, we are still adding market capitalization? How do we synthesize that? You see, uh, sometimes I think it's normally good to look at uh, statistics in their context. Yes. The, there are two facts here. One, the market capitalization is going up. If, uh, across all three indexes, yes. uh, indices, sorry. At the same time, the foreign investment is going down. That means, by by extension, the local investment in the in the boss is yes. going up. It's going up. Now, there's, there's, there's several, there could be several factors. Number one, the local investor <clears throat> has a better understanding of the Kenyan market than the foreign investor. That is obvious. So in terms of the learning curve and in terms of understanding the effects of the COVID on the boss yes. or the companies that are listed on the boss, the local investor is ahead of the curve of that information more than the foreign one. So they are more willing to go, into the, to go in than the foreign investor is. Number two, the foreign investor comes from a certain, from a certain domain, is from a certain country. And, and they could be driven by several factors. One, it could be that they, since it's, a, it's, 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 it's three months to an end of year, yes. the reason they invested was to, take out, was to take out the capital gain at the end of the year, yes. when the boss was going up, which it is. So maybe, maybe it is profit-taking. The, the other possibility is, because of what's going around the world, every company is mopping up as much liquidity as they possibly can. And that, that could most likely be the driver. Yes. And the time to exit any market is when it's on its way up. And this one of ours is on its way up. But so what has happened? There's a congruence or, or a, a meeting of two interests. The interest of the Kenyan or the local investor who has understood how the COVID is playing into our economy. Yes. And has started investing in the in the in, in the is moving away from the short in getting into the medium to long term investment. Yes, that goal has met with the foreign investor who is either taking out his profit or is cashing out to to buffer his uh, his, his, his his cash reserves from wherever he, he or she comes from. So those two have met. So this one is selling, this one is buying, but they are selling and buying for different reasons. But whatever the reasons. It, it has worked for our boss. Yes. Because as you can see the indices. So overall, if you have to look at the boss without looking at who, without looking at composition, the boss is better off. So composition notwithstanding. 
So yes, the, 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 so it, what would happen? Let's say they all left, and and the boss is still going up and it's full local. It is okay. It is okay. So the question is, the boss is, is the boss doing well? That would that what would, should have us. If the boss, if it was going south, then that, that would have been a, a big discussion. But now, yes. this discussion is about the composition, and uh, and, and and I think we, we had spoken about this earlier here that the foreign investor will always learn from the local investor. So after the foreign, local investors start putting in their money, you will see them back. They will come back. Yes. So it is an almost like called anywhere in the world. Yes. Yes. All right, let me cross over to Rodney. Rodney, you hear exactly what the CEO of Mirati Capital, Abraham Mudaga, is saying, that, well, composition notwithstanding, even if foreign investors are taking a net selling position, the conversation should be about that market capitalization. As long as we are adding, regardless of who's adding or not, we are doing okay, should that be it? Um, first of all, thank you for having me. And uh, what I can say with regards to that, uh, I'd also agree with my colleague, um, most of what we've been seeing is uh, ideally foreign investors taking profit. Yes. I'd say after we've seen the earnings releases from some of the major companies. So you're looking at the release of this recent news on how 2020 was. So uh, most investors are sort of re-strategizing. So like he mentioned, you find uh, some foreigners who are now profit taking at this point and some local uh, investors who are now uh, strategizing or taking up longer-term positions in the market. Yes. Woodney, just before I cross over to Ebra Mudogo this morning, I mean, I was appalled with what I read that, well, foreign investment at our local bulls was at an all-time high. What value does foreign investment really inject into our market? Um, I'd say considering uh, we receive a lot of funds from, I'd say, foreign uh, funds where yes. you have um, wealthy individuals in the Western countries trying to find attractive positions, I'd say, like in Africa. So you end up with a situation where you have people who have the funding coming to give opportunities to companies in developing countries such as Kenya. So in that aspect, uh, we normally receive quite a bit of our inflows from uh, foreign um, investors. So I'd say the foreign players in that sense have um, a key role, I'd say, in the Kenyan market. Yes. In terms of they have that access to uh, financial muscle, and that now plugged into the opportunities currently in developing countries allows them to take advantage of uh, this situation. Pretty much. Abraham, there's a question that I have for you as well. I mean, this coming at a time when we just learned the other day that the CBK is actually trying to even control the dividend payout by Safaricom because the majority of Safaricom investors are for rain. If indeed we're talking about the standing of the Kenyan shilling against the dollar, and we like to think that if you're foreign, then you're actually bringing in that foreign currency into the local market, should that be a worry as well? Because if the majority of them quit, then that means that we're mopping up more liquidity from our local market. No. In fact, I was just about to add to my colleague, and he, he, he played into that. Yes. There is, there is a forex implication yes. to this. Because when they come in, they buy. Yes. You see, so, 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 basically, so basically they have to buy the Kenya shilling. Yes. So that, that, that plays for, for our rate. That, that means the, the shilling becomes stronger because the flows are coming in. Yes. Now it's the other way around. The flows are leaving, so they have to buy dollars. That's why you've been seeing there's a lot of pressure on the dollar. And that's why CBK, you've never seen them do that. They've actually told Safaricom that they have to stagger. Yes. Why? Because if, if Safaricom goes to the market to buy the, those dollars for their entire payout, yes. it, will affect, it will affect the shilling. And you can, there's so much pressure on the shilling already. So, so that's why they, they had to break it that way. So yes, in terms of the forex, that th this movement plays into the forex in, in, into the forex field. Yes, but 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 uh, it, it plays in, in, into the forex field. But, but what is important here is that uh, we must be aware that, do that the dollars will stay with us here. Yes. But we must control the stock of it. Yes. So so overall, yes, it has it, it has for its implications, but it does not affect the boss at, at, at a local level. Pretty much. Yeah. Rodney, it's a direct question to you as well. Um, since we're talking about how the coronavirus pandemic has affected economies 
worldwide. It's not just the Kenyan economy. And we do know that for when investment has always gone into those strong quarters on our locables, then all of a sudden we have actually been saying that despite us talking about how most of the indices are pointing north, if you look at the NSC 20s, the one that is experiencing exactly the hot and cold movement that we've seen within the country, especially this year, after we announced the second containment of the uh, coronavirus virus. Yes, can you give me now a word name? Yes, I can get you. Can you repeat that for me? Yes, let me let me get into it. What we're saying that well, we might say that well, most of the foreign investors now are pretty much taking their gains out of the Kenyan market. Fine. But can we also look at this period, Rodney, where we're saying we are in the second containment of the coronavirus measures, and we did see exactly how the NSC 20 index reacted to that announcement for the president of the closure, especially of the hospitality industry in the country. Can we also link this net sell-off stand from foreign investors on exactly what is happening in the country right now? Um... It's true. It might have a slight effect. Yes. So, um, in that defense, we can say that uh, this uh, second lockdown, I say, I'd say, wasn't as stringent as the first. And we've sort of gotten used to how things run nowadays, where guys are working from home, and it seems to be the norm. So it's a bit easier. So I'd say, with regards to how the market has performed, I'd say it will be a bit. Um, resistant to yes. news around coronavirus at this point in time, although there is a slight effect from that announcement by the president. Pretty much. Abraham, do you share the same sentiment that we could also link this net sell of stand point from foreign investors on exactly what is happening in the local market? Actually, for me, it's these decisions actually may not even be related. Yes. Because everybody is making the individual deci um, decision based on where they sit, yes. based on the, the jurisdiction they sit in, and based on why they went into the boss in the first place. So probably we could be talking about a coincidence, but to, to me it's better to look at it each. Why is the local investor behaving the way they are behaving? Why is the foreign investor behaving the way they are behaving? But I don't think they are, th th there's a correlation between the two. But what is for sure that their actions do affect the boss. And their actions maybe affect each other. But the good thing is, the coincidence of those events worked in congruence. They did not work at cross purpose. Yes. Because when the local investor wants to come in, somebody is getting out. Yes. So, and whenever there's a willing buyer, willing seller in the market, then that market can sustain and can sustain a price, can, can sustain an upward trajectory. And and and, and the fact that the, the the trajectory is 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 upwards, it only means that the demand is higher than the supply. That that must be the implication. Yes. That that there are more there are more takers than there are givers. Yes. Because had it been the other way around, then the, then the boss would be, would be on its way south. Pretty much. Yeah. Gentlemen, let's move on to the next issue that we have for you this morning. Well, now, a report by Bloomberg indicates that a new bill seeks to amend the Income Tax Act, dubbed the Tax Amendment Bill 2018, which will now see cooking gas removed from the list of products that will be no longer zebra-rated. This report indicates that the Kenya Revenue Authority confirmed that there are actually indeed plans to remove liquefied petroleum gas from among the products that are zebra-rated. This is expected to immediately see a jump in the prices of the commodity that has become a go-to source of energy for most of the urban Kenyan residents should the bill go through Parliament and consequently affect the push for the government's push for the economy to adopt cleaner energy sources in the economy. Let's look at exactly how much we've been buying that cooking gas. Uh, all the way from uh, 2016 up to where we are right now. And remember, in 2016, that's when we were supposed to pay the highest. But we did not. Because then the National House intervened all the way up to where we are in 2020 now, getting it on an average of 2,056. And there's fear that it might jump now to 350 shillings. Good. Now, let's talk about that tax and on exactly how we performed and look at that specific um, area that KRA is targeting you can look at that. Domestic VAT was at negative 7%. That's what they are trying to recall. And all the way to domestic excess as well, which was a negative 4%. And that specific area, all taxes, negative 4 
negative 1.4 percent. Abraham, just before I cross over to Rodney, <laughs> is this an IMF issue now that we got to raise revenues despite what the national agenda is? The national agenda is push majority of the economy to use cleaner sources of energy. Now, there's a turnaround by saying, uh-uh, you got to tax them. So can we take out the national agenda of saying, push the economy to cleaner sources of energy? Now, what is for sure, and yes. what is not for debate, yes. is that Kenya needs more revenue to run its, to run its economy. Yes. Whether it's IMF pushed, whether it's pushed from other quarters, that is secondary. Yes. The primary thing is that we need more uh, revenue. Yes. Our primary source of revenue is tax revenue. Now, taxes are either direct or indirect. Now, VAT is an indirect tax. If you go to your shop, whatever you buy in the supermarket, if you look at your receipt, you'll see down there there's a summary of VAT. So you pay your taxes every time. You, you, you con it, it's a consumptive tax. Now, this is what they want to apply. Is, is, is a bit tricky, and in this sense, there's been a push for the last 10 years to push people from firewood or firewood and charcoal yes. towards gas. Yes. Now, the, the only challenge has been that the 13 kg container or, 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 or cylinder is too big a price for, 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 the, for, for the market we are we're trying to address. And there have been effort to try and remove, uh, bring the container down to 2G, to, to, to kg. Yes. There's even an initiative of a company, which we shall name, not name by name, which is now doing an initiative where you pay, you, you pay, pay, pay per use. So th there have been initiatives in that direction. Now, what this tax does, you know, in, in a tax, there's the incidence and there's impact. Yes. So you, you can hit it on the, on, the, on, on, the, on the oil company, but the oil company has the capacity to pass all of it, which they will do. Anybody who's, ta who's taxed and has the ability to pass it on, will always pass it on. Yes. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they can. Now, what does that have? Because now, most domestic incomes are, 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 are no longer static, they're actually declining. So, so what will happen? Now, we will, we, will, we will probably reverse some of these gains that we've, that we've had over time. And which begs the question, is this the only source we could have gotten the money we are going to get? And number two, sometimes we wish for something we may not get. Yes. If you, if you, if you put a tax on, an, on a commodity that is not a necessity, who tells you that people are going to consume that? that? So what will happen is what they call the elasticity of demand. People will, will shy off from that product. So the, what will be the net effect? The net effect is that you'll collect less. Not only will you collect less, you'll also have defeated the agenda for which this gas was being pushed. So what am I saying in, in some total? In some total, I'm saying, let's think a bit more. Let's, let's tax our mind a bit more. There are so many other places we can get VAT from. Yes. And many other indirect taxes. And raise the same amount of money. Yes. Because see, it's always good to start with, what amount are you looking for? Then engineer it backwards. Yes. But for sure, in my honest opinion, this is not going to work. I can say it here authoritatively. It is not going to work. It is not going to work because you are taxing a market that is very sensitive to price. So what will happen? People will just leave that market and go for substitutes because substitutes exist. Yes. You see, in any commodity, you have to look at the substitutability of that. Yes. It's just like margarine and butter. If butter goes up, people go for margarine. Plain and simple. You can put all the taxes you want to put margarine. In butter, you'll be in that room alone and people will be in the margarine room. Yes. So it will be the same thing. People will leave you in the gas room and go back to their charcoal and whatever other sources of... of and people go back to the ways of eating a meal a day. When they were doing two fires, now they'll do one fire. So sometimes, le let's go beyond the numbers. Let's go beyond, let's not over, over, some of these models have limitations. You have to look at, yes, the numbers may, may sound right, they may do some projections, but sometimes, as they say, the ground is different. Let's look, let's always look at the ground. So in some total, for me, th this should be reworked, this should be thought. It's, it's not a move in the right direction. It's not a move in the right direction. Abraham, I'm going to come back to you because that's the same, same push that we've seen from the government that are actually we were supposed to be buying petrol at a higher price. And remember, what we have right now is just a short window all the way to May 14th and we don't know exactly what's going to happen from there. So the question is going to be how bad
badly does the government need that revenue? Rodney, let me come back to you because it's the same, same question that I'm pushing forward to you. How badly does the government need that revenue? And you hear exactly what Abraham is saying, that sometimes we need to ask ourselves the question, is it really a potent area to go to to get that tax? Rodney, are we at that area where we're saying we got to get something, even if little? Mm, I believe, um, or I'll agree with my colleague, that uh, that the talks with, uh, between amongst government uh, concerning taxing gas might seem counterproductive yes. in the sense that they're pushing for more greener sources of energy and taxing the use of the same the same sources. So in a way, it sort of pulls us back. But um, the way I'd look at it is from the point of you have two agendas where you're pushing for the use of green energy and you have one where you have the need for revenue. So at this point in time, it seems, it seems the need for higher revenue has overtaken the need for greener sources of energy. So in a way, you you, fi you find these talks amongst the government. And in a way, you, you, you know the right thing to do, although you still have another issue that you need to resolve. <laughs> so it's sort of, sort of a balancing act, in a way. Although uh, I believe um, the government has an uphill task with regards to this conversation surrounding taxation. Yes. All right, Abraham, let's clear this conversation like this then. We were almost, no. at the beginning of this month, I'm talking about April 14th, no. buying petrol at around 127 shillings a litre. And put it in mind that right now, it's at the highest we've ever seen it, at 122, Abraham. Only for that to be recounted at the last minute. How badly does this government need that revenue, Abraham? At this time, again, but we have news that the government is trying to get people who are coming to advise the government on exactly what they should do to restructure their debt, to just avert it from going into a debt crisis. Okay, let's put everything in perspective. Yes. We said here that already, as every time we start a budget, we have two items that we have to deal with that are already with us. Yes. Debt service public wage bill, which consume a trillion each. So we start from there. We have KRA who has never hit two trillion. So we start with a scenario where we, we are deficit even before we get started. So, so and that's why you've seen the, the government has gone out and, and, and wants to try and sort out the, yes. the, 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 the debt service issue, because that can be done. On the other hand, you've seen a lot of SRC action in the, in the papers. They're also trying to deal with the, the public will be because those, if those two are sorted, then all these temperatures will come down. So to answer your question, does the government need? Yeah, it needs it very badly, as you can see, because KRA is not even raising enough to just deal with those two. Yes, and you've not talked about other, including the developmental agenda. So, so, so what are we saying in some total? We are saying that we have to, like, like, and then go to the petroleum. The petroleum, they use a certain formula. I mean, yeah, at a personal level, I have a problem with that formula. But that is a discussion <laughs> for another day. Yes. It's something we can have a, a full discussion. Yes. We put the formula on the screen and we, we go it component by component for the public to understand what yes. it, how, they, how it's done. Yes. But the issue is, we are in hard times. So the oil companies, need, need, they need to also take some heat. Because, because the, if, we can't be all of us just passing the buck to the, to the end consumer. I don't know if you've noticed, every time you're driving nowadays, the petrol stations are full. That's a very strange phenomenon. Why, why is that? It's because people are adding fuel in very small incrementals. Yes. That is, that is the reason yes. why petrol stations are full. Because people because we're just, we're just getting by because of the cost of that fuel. So that formula also needs to be thought. You know, nothing is cast in stone. This formula was put by someone, it, it can be reviewed by someone else. So uh, the sum total is that we need to have a global conversation of what are all our tax points, how elastic are those tax points, how, how much of impact can those tax points be passed on to, Yes. and then, and what are the implications of each of those tax points on the global agenda of government? Like you see this one, which is just, <laughs> my colleague Rodney has put very well, it's counterproductive, because you will get the exact opposite of what you're trying to get. So, and, and this comes only when everybody is talking to each other, yes. not 
at each other. Yes. And preferably talking in the same room. Not me, I'm in this room, you are in the next one, the, my, my colleagues in the next one. So at the end of the day, let's all come together and agree that, yes, government needs a lot of money, no, no doubt about it, but why can't we tax our minds of how we can do it with the least pain? Pretty much. All right, we're going to a short break. But once we come back, there's another issue now, and it's not really COVID-19 related, or it is related to our trade deficit. It is getting out of hand, and the question we're coming back to look at it next. Let's look at it just before we go on that tiny little break. This is exactly where we are in terms of that trade deficit. You see that graph, for you to understand it, it's not pointing north. It's actually been negative. We've never had a positive trade deficit in this country. But now, that negative is increasing, and you can actually see from that data what is going on. And it's on exactly what we're talking about this morning. Oil, related imports, and our manufacturing sector, it is dead. Is there a way we can turn it around once we come back here on a business? I am.